Dave says, love the podcast and the workout website. Dave, thank you so much. Uh, uh, Brian uh, has done a marvelous job, and I'm really be pr uh, proud to be part of this. Currently doing the RKC bus bench workout and enjoying it. Uh, folks, if you don't know, go to danjohnworkouts.com, and it's in, in the bus bench section. He's a father of two girls, three years and one year old. And uh, just like me, I remember those days. It had been uh, 91 and 93 for me. Just downloaded 40 Years with a Whistle on audiobook. But are there any other resources or books you recommend for advice on raising well-adjusted and happy girls or fatherhood in general? Well, both of my daughters, Kelly and Lindsay, are happy. Now, well-adjusted, well, let's just hope for that, huh? Listen, you're already there. You already have it in front of you, Dave. Uh, when my daughter graduated from the eighth grade, uh, Kelly, I wrote her a book called From Dad to Grad. Uh, I quoted a bit. I think it's an easy strength, and I think it's in 40 Years with the Whistle, but it's free to you on the workout website or just Google From Dad to Grad Dan John. And it's funny because you can actually buy it on places where I get no money, which cracks me up. People are selling my free book for money, uh, which sounds a little odd to me. But if I could give you one, maybe I'll give you, let me give you one or two pieces of advice. Number one, and this is huge, and your kids are young right now, so you, you can build this in. No television on school nights. In fact, boy, if I, in, in hindsight, no electronics on school nights. Um, when my daughter Kelly was a sophomore in high school, she said to me and Tiff, I want to talk to you about something. Oh boy, think about this. What good can a sophomore in high school say when she says, can I talk to you about something? So she sat down to, with us and you know, Tiff and I are like, okay, okay, here we go. Something, and Kelly says famously, is it okay if I change my bedtime? I just think now that I'm in high school, I should be able to stay up past 8.30. Now, you can only imagine the sense of relief. You could probably, you can probably still hear the, oh, oh, thank God, uh, coming out of both Tiffany and I. Well, we both said, well, sure, that sounds good. And she, she went downstairs. And then the two of us looked at each other and said, did they have a bedtime? And we realized we'd never set a bedtime, but we live in Utah. The sun goes down this time here about five. Well, I think my daughters thought that since they had gone to bed at 8, 8.30 every night of their life, that they had a bedtime. And there wasn't. It's just the fact that if they're not sitting up watching TV and just junk television, if the sun goes down at five, and I always had dinner ready for them, they got their homework done, they read Harry Potter, Around 7.30, 8 o'clock, you kind of run out of things to do, and so you go to bed. I got to tell you, for academic and athletic reasons, so Sunday through Thursday nights, no TV, and you can go with the no electronics. I already just hinted to the other thing. We had a, a fixed menu, and uh, many of our meals were made with the slow cooker. Uh, many of our meals... Uh, so basically, I would break meals into a grill meal and a slow cooker meal and try to alternate through the week on that. Um, in fact, to the point that there was a time where uh, I had the George, the big George Foreman grill and a slow cooker. And when I was cleaning one, I was serving out of the other. And the next night, I'd be cleaning the other and serving off the other. Um, having a fixed menu for the week uh, we always did steak and salad on Monday, Viking enchiladas on Tuesday, Wednesday was jambalaya, Thursday was breakfast for dinner. That was just what we did. Certainly you can change in any way you want. Uh, later when the girls were, uh, oh, probably from about mm, fourth and sixth grade on, I also had a breakfast menu I followed with just a, a variety of simple meals to make. Uh, I had a thing we called crack oatmeal that took overnight to make and I would make certain egg dishes, and I had a real regimented schedule. The upside of this is when the kids come home from school, say like you make a, a slow crock-potted uh, chicken noodle soup. 
the moment they come in from school or their activities, the first thing they smell is dinner. You don't have to worry about all the damn fast food restaurants on the way home. You, dinner is waiting. And the moment you get in, if they're starving, I mean, maybe it's not the best dinner in the world, but you can feed them immediately. Uh, boy, I tell you, that was great. But the other side of that is this. When we went shopping, we shopped to the menu. So we didn't pick up a lot of extra junk, which was very valuable. And I tried to have all the shopping done one time a week. Now, if you ran out of something during the week, you'd have a very simple thing. You just have to kind of, you know, fill in the slots. Uh, back then, sadly, the company just stopped. But we also had a, a weekly, uh, uh, it was called Winder Dairy would show up. And we would, the night before they came, just check through anything we might have ran out of. So the couple of things I want to warn you as a parent, keep your kids as best you can away from fast food restaurants. Uh, keep your kids as best you can uh, away from uh, junk entertainment. And do your best that every night you have me a meal as a family. It, uh, we had dinner when I was growing up at 510 every night. It was right after my dad got home. And my family dealt with disabled American vets, uh, social upheaval, insanity in the world. But every night at 510, we sat down and ate dinner as a family. And I think that was a game changer, well, especially for me. So, Dave, I love your question. Thank you for asking. And I'm just an email away to help you out.